What do you love about being Asian? This question was posed on the internet, and these are the top 20 responses. Let's see if any surprise us. Yeah, let's get into number one. Having access to a completely different culture outside of Western civilization allows one to have a much more diverse perspective on a whole range of issues. Ah, and I think that not everybody appreciates a diverse perspective, but I understand what they're saying because also like, I think as an Asian American, if you're born here and raised here, you already feel like you're Western. That's built in. So you're like, oh, now I value this other kind of cultural perspective that likes, makes me see like the world a little differently. Right, right, right. Uh, somebody followed up by saying, being able to pick practices and values from both American and Asian cultures that align with what I want in life. Oh, Basically, I they're saying like, you got more pools of cultural, just everything to pick from. Yeah, and I think that uh, it gives you more empathy for like foreign things because a lot of Asian stuff is viewed as super foreign in America. So then you being Asian American, you're already like, oh, I'm used to like dealing with like uh, diversity or like interesting, you know, customs and stuff. Right, well, for example, Andrew, me and you have eaten more diverse food, not just from Asia, but from literally around the globe more than almost like... You're, we're probably in the 99th percentile right. of American citizens. Point number two, this is going to sound bad, but we are very honest about what we are generally good and bad at. <laughs> Yo, this one, I had to move this to be number two because this one was fire. This was an interesting uh, response because I, I found that it did remind me that like Asians can be pretty blunt. And I think that is actually part of Asian culture or maybe not only Asian culture, but definitely it's part of Asian culture where it's like, you're kind of like, oh, okay, you know, oh, you're, oh, you gain weight. You're so fat. Oh, you're yeah. chubby, right? And then that's that's very blunt. Or it's like, hey, you know, you're not good at this thing, so don't do this. Like, you know, it's just, they'll just say it. It's very common for Asians to be like, you know, I know that we are good at these things, but these other things, we are like not that good at it. It is true. That is our weakness. Yeah, and like, I think just acknowledging that and being... You know, there's pros and cons to that. I, I think that as long as Asian parents can see that there is holistically like different talents, then it's okay. But sometimes it was yeah. destructive by telling a kid like, oh, you're just not good at that. How come you're not good at that? Oh, you're worthless. Right, right, right. It's not very American to do that. Honestly, right. it's very American to be like, oh, we're the best at everything. Right. Like the F the teacher. The teacher tell you you're wrong. F them. But like Asian parents will be like, no, 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 no. What did the teacher say you did? I go with the teacher. Mm. Point number three uh, are beautiful languages. Now, there was a lot of people arguing about this in the Reddit comment section because some people were saying, uh, are Asian languages beautiful? And my whole thing is like, I, I, I think they can all be beautiful depending on who's speaking it. But there's ones that have a higher rate of being beautiful. Let me tell you this, guys. You know how like every ethnicity, every country has like, it's country accent. Like in America, there, we, we do the impression. We're just joking around right. though. And not all, you know, racist people talk this way or whatever. We're not saying that. But like, you know, when you talk like this and you know, you're not, I'm from the South, man. You know what I mean? Like that is a, every country has its country accent. Right. Like every country I, has what they consider a country accent. And I think that no matter the Asian language, yes, sometimes the country accent can, let's be honest, sound a little bit more harsh on the ears. But I've heard a refined version or a nice version of every single Asian language. I don't, uh, Vietnamese, I've heard it sound yo, good. Yo, I've yo, heard it sound good before. I'm not going to lie though. I'm taking countryside Japanese over countryside Fujinese. <laughs> From a sonic right. level, I don't we, know. We, I'm just saying you can compare. Okay, all right, all right. We don't need to rank the, the country version accents of all the Asian countries, but I think I've heard a nice, pleasant flowy version of every and, and you know what helps music and rap like when that country puts out uh like a thai rap or vietnamese rap or whatever rap it is, bengali rap like it sounds starts to sound cool right 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 no no recently there was a uh punjabi ra rapper who just got signed with his oh. <laughs> play that clip anyway point number four the food, the community, the history. And then he literally said the Mongols, ancient China, Japan. But I also love the martial arts such as jujitsu, Thai kickboxing, Muay Thai, Kung Fu. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, I think martial arts is something that we should really be proud of, you know, and like, 
yeah, I would obviously mixed martial arts is really big right now, but jujitsu is really big, and that comes from Japan. Uh, obviously, I do want to credit, and I do want to credit that the story goes that even Kung Fu has roots coming from India from a long time ago. You know, Rakali, so, right? Yeah, a long, long time ago. Now, why Indians are not known for martial arts today, that's a different question. Maybe we can explore they that. They got the slaps, though. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're sla- they yeah, got they the did. slap of God. Yeah. Point number five, the food. This oh one was God. pretty much the top. I, I couldn't just put it number one because it sounds so shallow, though. But in a way, it's almost the one that has the most universal agreement. Wow. You can take the most self-hating Asian. They're going to like the food. No, dude, dude. I don't care how whitewashed or self-hating you are as an Asian. You eat Asian food. If you're an Asian that does not like Asian food, you are literally, you're like Uncle Ruckus. You're trying way too hard, man. Um, a lot of people said Actually, the Asian vegetarian vegan food is extra good because it was developed over centuries of Buddhism. I think so. Dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys have ever been to the, uh, the what is it, the kosher vegan Buddha Chinese Bodai, spots, yeah. whoo, some of the stuff there is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, man. And honestly, I... Oh, hey, Andrew, your favorite spot, Spicy Moon. I know you love Spicy yeah, I Moon. I love Spicy Moon is a vegan Chinese restaurant, Sichuan style, but I would say just like Korean panchan is so delicious. And I think that... I largely, a lot of it was developed during the years when Korea was mostly Buddhist and they weren't eating a lot of meat and they had to perfect preserving veggies. Banchan's fire. fire. It's fire. Banchan is fire. It's a 10 out of 10. Uh, number six, subtleties. We are less white and black about things. We value being respectful and value a way of seeking harmony instead of being confrontational, self-righteous, and indignant. This is one thing that I think America could learn from Asians is just find harmony. And find peace and like... Uh, but we don't want to! That's for you nerds! No, America needs to do it a little bit more now. Like, America needs... Like, I was talking to this politician, Marianne Williamson. She ran for president, by the way, for the Democratic Party. But anyways, I got a chance to chat with her. And she she said America needs some more, like, Buddhist values. Well, I thought that was interesting. Uh, Buddhism, Taoism, the yin and the yang. I don't want to get too much into it, but long story short... I think Abrahamic religions, as you can see right now, even in 2024, let's rewind it a few thousand years, they be beefing with each other. Yeah, but but uh, not to say that all all religions have some good, have good values. You know, it's yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, execution and stuff like that. But and, and the judgmentalness and the yeah. uh, ability to say, oh, you're a different tribe to me maybe i'll dehumanize you and if you dehumanize somebody then all of a sudden everything's off the board what right? about like, mama make america meditate a little bit more i don't know maybe i think i think <laughs> americans could meditate mama. like i'm not saying meditation i'm just saying just calm down breathe america uh point number seven the high emphasis on education obviously this is a stereotype but stereotypes i mean some people i'm not saying this some people say the stereotypes are not given but earned this no, no certain, Asians have earned this one. Asians earned this stereotype. I don't know about everything else, but Asians earned this one. No, this one is essentially kind of true. But I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, it, it education, especially the way, dude, education in almost any country can change your life. It changes your family's yeah. life. It can take you to whole different places. It doesn't mean you got to get a PhD, but it just means like education and something but, like but you have I, to be educated feel, in something. yeah yeah and i feel like people who are anti-education they're thinking oh what's the use of getting like three phds and being all theoretical it's all about what you well, nobody's saying like the 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 hundred out of a hundred choice mm. like at least have a minimum baseline of like 60 out of a hundred right, right, right at a bare minimum in terms of like your uh educational capacity point number eight the non-aging gene. Mm. Um, somebody said, yeah. Actually, for me, even, I like being short. Because Hold obviously, up, it's who, a stereotype who, today. Who, who said they like being short? Was it a girl? Oh, all right, all right. Here's, no guy would say that. No guy's going to say I actually think that. some guys like being short. You know why? Because it's sort of like, they don't have to like help out if like, there's a fight or something like that. Like, nobody expects I don't know. the short I, guy I to. think I could see a, a woman being like, oh, I'd rather be short than gigantic. Yeah, yeah, because for it's more feminine, yeah, I guess, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, but basically, just to point out these two things, by the way, these are stereotypes, whatever archetypes you want to say. Uh, the non-Asian gene, Andrew, Asians have a lot more collagen in their skin. This is scientifically proven. They are uh, like 10 year to 15 years younger looking than their Western counterparts. Yeah, a uh, term called neoteny. It's like having little 
more baby like features, which but, is but pros it also and cons. has to do with the collagen, the skin wrap. Mm. Because listen, guys, this is a crazy way to say it. Humans are actually like sausages. Like sausages in the in the tighter the skin wrap is on a sausage, like the better it looks. But then when you this you get older, the skin wrap, you know, loosens around the casing loosens around the sausage. Look it up, guys. Point number nine, being confused with other Asians. This guy said he likes that. Because I'll tell you this. When I used to work at Verizon in college, I was getting confused for my manager, my district manager. I was getting confused for all the Asians who worked at the shop. Uh, even just the other day, Andrew, shout out to him. I'm not going to say his name. We have a German Jordanian guy we play basketball with. He called, he's called me three wrong names already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. If, do you like that, though? Some people could like it. I don't know if I like that. Um, number 10, as an Asian coming to the United States has allowed me to appreciate the United States as a free and democratic country. Mm. Basically, they're saying because I came from Asia where there's not a lot of choices, even though it's more stable and more safe, I came to appreciate the freedom of America. Right. Does he mean freedom in America in an economic sense or freedom of America in a political sense? Because... I'll tell you this, they, they, in, relatively to Asia, it's actually more free uh, on both ends. Right, right, right. It's free, way more free with like guns and drugs and everything, like good and bad, honestly. You just got way more choices here. America's lit. Point number 11, little to no hair care and yeah. no body hair. Yeah, no, I, I think generally people like having less body hair, but some is nice, especially for men, shows you a little manly. But it, it, de it depends. It depends, right? Asians would, we would, you know, the dolphin thing, Ali Wong. Anyway, we don't got to get into it. Um, point number 12, Andrew, coming from tight knit families and communities, like the family not wanting to go against itself or the community. Basically, this guy's saying, you know, people that I grew up with, we were about to stay friends forever because we're all going through such a unique experience together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think community and being from such just the same background, and it's like when your families came over the same way, you're the same ethnicity, and you guys share the same community, and you find peace within that, that's really beautiful because you guys are going to spend the rest of your lives probably knowing each other, you know? And obviously, it's better if your community operates well and your ball all your families are good and you know treat each other with respect and you know obviously there's you know communities that are like breaking down in negative ways but yeah if you have a good community and you're an ethnicity like you're asian that's that's pretty cool yeah cool. i mean we grew up in an area that was not very asian and i still keep in contact with some of the non-asian people whether they were white black or latino yeah. but i would say the people that i'm most in touch with are the asians that we yeah. grew up with in our uh, in the small town uh point number 13 I love being able to subvert people's expectations because I can be the quiet type, but I can also be the loud type and basically rock people's image of Asians in their mind. Yeah, I think sometimes there is pleasure and there's an enjoyment in subverting expectations at wowing people. Why do you, how does anybody get wowed? It's because you subvert their expectations, right? Mm. So so sometimes wowing people, uh, what was the joke? Uh, PK was like, PK comedy was saying, um, it's not about the size, it's about the surprise. Right. Uh, you know, referring to Asian men. So I'm saying like, that can be to your benefit. It can be. Right, right, right. Like an Anthony Jeselnik joke punchline. Just rocking, subverting expectation. Um, point number 14, being able to be a tourist in East Asian cities and just blend in. Or just anywhere around Asia. Right. Like anywhere you go in Asia, you essentially unless you dress super different, people are going to think you're, you know, a local. Yeah. 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 No, I, I remember when I was uh, in China, it's like all the other like white people or whatever that you're with, they have all these stories about like people wanting to take photos with them and touch their hair. I was just walking around. I didn't get, uh, feel that. Point number 15. I smell like a baby angel cake after three days of no showering while my non-Asian friends quiver in fear if they haven't showered themselves in more than 10 hours. Yeah, shout out to the ABCC11 gene. No odor, baby. Very little odor, at least. Uh, point number 16, my calves. This is a meme right now, Andrew. David, got as, big calves. A, as a as a Asian guy with very large calves. Like, like what am I, nine out of 10? Like, I would say of your out exterior physical traits that people see on a day-to-day -day basis, they're probably the most standout if people check out your legs, right? So I'm saying that Asians with big calves, they don't 
this stereotype is not as well known, but I've always heard this low key. Bodybuilders know. Bodybuilders know, like guys who work out, they know. They're like, yo, Asians, man, they kind of got solid calves. Like for some reason, like, like, you know, and, and, and mostly calf, calf size is mostly genetic. Yeah, because it's very hard to gain mass on your calf. It, it is hard. I'm not saying you can't, but it's hard. So I'm saying like, I don't know if anybody has done the studies of the evolution because everybody's like, okay, you have eyebrows to block the sweat that comes down from your forehead. We get it. Okay. Oh, maybe Asians had small eyes because of the wind and the cold. So they had to like squint more and then they evolved that way. So there's all these like at least hypothesis, but what's the hypothesis for big calves? I mean, I would say probably people would draw it to what agriculture. Uh, let's be honest. Some people are going to say it's for picking rice. And squats, I don't know. Do you even need big calves to squat? But maybe that's why Asians are so good at that deep Asian squat too. I do think we have lower centers of gravity. That's why there's so many uh, champion Asian power lifters. But what is the real evolutionary adaptation explanation? I want to know. Maybe that we don't know for sure, but what's a good theory, guys? I'm not going to lie though. I laugh at all the times the non-Asian bodybuilders make those memes about like, man... I could get my girl back, but only if I got bigger calves than this Asian guy. And then everybody's like, no. That's funny. Uh, point number 17. This guy said, this, this girl said, you know, the, my best thing about Asians is we don't succumb to drug use when we have life setbacks. That's funny. I mean, yeah, I, obviously I think Asian American drug use is lower than other people, but it's definitely on the rise, guys. So... Um, well, because of, uh, Asians are becoming more westernized, and a Asians are becoming more westernized yeah, as well, Yeah, but, right? yeah, let's be honest. Like, drugs was probably the number one thing, like, a lot of Asian families don't want, the, want their kids even getting close to. Yeah, so well, I think it's very different because a lot of parents who were American and even their grandparents were American, the parents that were part of that, like, Woodstock generation, they did drugs. So it's hard for those parents to tell the kids to not do drugs if the parents did it. I can categorically say our parents have never even zero out of 100 drug rating. Dude, Asians definitely do less drugs, though. I'm not saying they don't do none, but they definitely do less. Right. Uh, for sure. Look, look at the stats. Number 18, people never really assume that I am dangerous. That's funny. Now, it's a, it's a pro and a con, depending on who you are. I think if you're a dude who wants to be viewed as masculine, strong, and not get picked on... I'm trying then, to project a dark triad archetype. Yeah, so then... Looking dangerous can play towards you. Also, looking dangerous, appearing dangerous, or edgy can play along with you or, when it or, comes or to what dating. About, what about just capable of danger? Yeah, capable of danger. Like, I think if you're an Asian guy and people view you as a completely non-threat, incapable of even hurting a fly, that's not necessarily good. At least in the Western world. Yeah, you know, like you want to be viewed as at least a, a man of some fortitude. You know what was really interesting? I remember growing up in Seattle. You cannot get a cop to even look at you if you're Asian. But the second we went to Canada, we were getting searched endlessly for hours. Because in Canada, I guess, like, so there were some really dangerous Asians in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. So it goes to show you it can even shift a lot on the context. I remember, man, we had to give the phone passwords, all this stuff. I was like, man, is this what it feels like to be profiled? Mm. Point number 19. I agree, uh, basically, that enjoying Asian media such as manga, manhwa, animes, different things without it being weird. <laughs> like, you don't have to look like, you know what I mean? Uh, like, you're supposed to like these things. Yeah. Like, uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, for the people who love anime, yeah. I mean, it is, it is from Asia. Yeah, so I guess it is more normal. I, I, I did notice that, though, like because I always played basketball and football growing up. And it was like, for me to know about slam dunk or like sailor, whatever Pokemon, it was like normal. Whereas another guy on my team that was white or black, that would have, uh, they would, it would have caused them to be a point of derision. Right. Like, I feel like if you're an Asian dude, you're expected to be able to name at least 15 Pokemon off the top of your head. But if you're like a black dude and you name 15, people are like nerd. Yeah. If you make a joke about like, uh, Starcraft or League of Legends or something like that. Even if you're a jock, it's like, yeah, he's Asian. It's, it's okay. Point number 20, we are extremely efficient. We'll take any process and do it faster, cheaper, and smarter. <laughs> yeah, I think having, David, well, how do you feel about the efficiency stereotype? Because it kind of does come rooted in like 
Asia's like manufacturing side. Toyotas. Asia's, Come on, the 90s Toyotas, Andrew. Some of them are still running with 500,000 miles on the road right now. Yeah, and, and we're known as not being the fastest cars or making, we're not, Asia, some parts of Asia are known for making the best products, but largely I would say Asia is known for its affordable and efficient manufacturing. That is a good stereotype for the most part, but also can be bad. Right. Well, the only bad side is that I guess it's not known as to be as luxurious as like German or uh, Ferrari engineering, or or Italian, like that. French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the interiors get them from Italy. You right. know what I mean? Right. That's what people would say because of the Asian stuff, or maybe use fake leather or something like that, or synthetics, something that's just more with the Asian ethos. We wouldn't think like old world luxury. David, you know what's uh, number twenty one? I love smala sauce. I love being able to make a chili oil that is connected to my culture, but also blending in other influences. What, like what other influences are in Smala? Italian influences. It's inspired by the Calabrian chili oil. And I will say this, obviously, guys, I don't know the history on Italian food, but it definitely shares a lot of similarities with Chinese food. Let's be honest. Visually, tons of similarities. So shout out to Italian food. I love it, but so glad that we were able to make Smala sauce inspired by the two cultures. Um... Get it on Amazon.com right now or smallasauce.com. You know what my favorite thing is? I would say about being Asian American, and I, I just feel like we do things the right way. I don't know if we fully get credit for it, or maybe people think that's like we're like the teacher's pet or like the nerdy kid in class if we were to triangulate like U.S. high school social dynamics with like the American population. But like, for example, Andrew, you know, how everybody's like, oh, Asians can't drive. Asians can't drive. Have you looked at the vehicular homicide rates? Asians is in last place by a lot. Mm -hmm. Like we are tremendously in the last place in, uh, in terms of causing vehicular homicide deaths. Right. But everybody's like, oh, Asians can't drive. Right. But they make all the best cars and they have the lowest vehicular homicide rate by like, it's not even close. Like nobody's going to catch Asians ever. David, I think what you're trying to point at is that there are some inconsistencies in people's stereotypes. And, you know, I don't know, maybe certain stereotypes will go away eventually, but some may stick around for a while. But anyways, these are the things that people love about being Asian. I think these are mostly legit. Honestly, I agree with a lot of them. Uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below. What do you love about being Asian? Hey, man, East Asia to Southeast Asia. Andrew, South Asia, Central Asia. Central, don't sleep on the food of Central Asia. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what I love? I love my small eyes because this way uh, I don't get, I don't think I get as much stuff stuck in them. Mm, when you're know. riding your scooter around. Hey, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What are some ones that people left out? What are some ones you want to double down on? Please let us know. Share this with your friends. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.